Okay, welcome to uh, GCSE Computer Science pre-release material case study uh, task one pseudocode. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk through how you'd go about answering uh, this particular task. I haven't included all the spiel about the scenario at the start of the uh, case study um, on screen, but just to summarize, basically there's some dude um, and he's organizing uh, outings for senior citizens um, either the guy's got too much time on his hands or <laughs> the guy's just you know one of these good guys yeah so um, yeah he's organizing these trips and he wants a system that allows him to calculate for this particular task the cost of running the outing so the information that we have from task one is uh, how much um, it's going to cost to hire a coach the cost of food and the cost of a, a theater ticket and then obviously the costs for uh, the cost of the meal and the theatre theater ticket decrease with the number of people or the number of senior citizens going on the event. That's just standard business stuff. Um, the cost of the coach stays the same. Obviously, the number of seats don't change uh, based on uh, certain groups of senior citizens going together. There must be minibus sizes, and then you know, regardless of whether, for example, for the first one you get 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16 you're probably still going to get your, your same size minibus. So task number one, if we have a look at the information that we want to output, uh, we just want to output the total cost and the cost per person, only two things. Um, and to calculate that information, the only thing we really need is the number of senior citizens going on the trip. Because once we have the number of senior citizens going on the trip, we can allocate which category it goes into uh, in terms of the number of people. And once we know uh, which category the this particular outing fits into we can calculate the hire of the coach the cost of a meal cost of a theater ticket and as a case study highlights um, for the first two rows uh, we would we would only need two carers and for the final row uh, we would need three carers so again that information you know all comes from the number of senior citizens so that's the only information we really need to input into task number one so first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare and we're going to initialize all our variables that we think we're going to need. So I'm looking through the case study now. Uh, we're going to need to keep a tab of how many senior citizens go on the trip. So that's the first thing. So I'm just going to highlight that in bold. Okay, second thing we're going to need to know is how many carers. And it changes. It could be two, it could be three. So we're going to need a variable to store that. Okay, we're going to need a variable uh, that holds um, the total number of people. So we have senior citizens that are separate and carers that are separate. But we need one for the total number of um, people going on the trip. Now that's important because when we're calculating the cost uh, per senior citizen, carers don't pay. So we need to get rid of the carers from the total value and then divide it by the number of senior citizens so that carers essentially going on the trip for free. Okay. Uh, the last thing that we're going to need is we're going to have to keep a track of the total cost as well. Um, the cost changes, um, so I'm just going to highlight cost and those would be essentially our four variables so let's just get them declared we know uh, integer is going to be senior citizens yeah you don't get half a senior citizen so we don't need a float and we're going to start that off from zero okay we're going to need uh, carers again we just use in carers equals zero and remember when you're declaring variables use meaningful names uh, make sure there's no spaces there's no gaps um, if you want to you know separate words then use an underline or uh, use a capital um, to start off the next word, but don't use any spaces. Uh, total number of people is going to be in total people. We're going to initialize that to zero to start off with. And the cost uh, is probably likely to be a float. We don't really know when we divide stuff together. So we're going to have float, and the cost of that is going to be 0, 0.0. Okay, so we've initialized and declared our four variables. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to ask the question so how many senior citizens are going to go on the trip so we're going to do our standard print and we want to enter how many senior citizens enter senior citizens okay and we want to read that into a variable so we're going to read that uh, into our senior citizens variable so we've got that number uh, in okay now the case study highlights that if less than 10 people go on the trip or more than uh, 36 go on the trip we you know they 
you can't you can't allocate for that. So the first thing that would make sense to do is check whether the number of senior citizens that have been entered in uh, is is within the accepted criteria. So we're validating the information that goes in straight away. So we need to make a decision. Do we need to carry on or do we not need to carry on? So we're going to go with a standard if statement. So if the number of senior citizens is less than 10, okay, because 10 is acceptable, or the number of senior citizens is more than 36, Okay, it means that basically there's a problem here. Yeah? So what we're going to do is we want to inform the user that there's a problem. So we're just going to print a message saying uh, incorrect amount, and we want to help the user here. Yeah, we want to, they don't know that, that maybe they don't know that the system doesn't accept these numbers. So we want to let them know the only numbers of ten and thirty-six citizens are acceptable. Yeah. So again using meaningful messages we're trying to help the user here now if they if the numbers are not within that range then naturally it means it's, it's acceptable so now we need to decide does it go into category number one the row number one 12 to 16 people does it go into 17 26 does it go into 27 39 now i know some of the students are going to be sitting there thinking oh what's going on here you know you've written that um less than 10 are not acceptable Obviously, less than 10 are not acceptable, but the number of people in the list starts off at 12. And how does that work? Well, it works because we've got to take two carers in. So for every 10 citizens, um, there's going to be an ad ad additional two carers. So then you've got 12. Similarly, for the last row, you've got 39, but the only number of citizens are only 36. So is there a mistake there? Well, it's not a mistake there because 36, the additional three carers brings you up to 39. So it's still acceptable to, to, to fit that row. So that's the reason why the numbers on the minimum and the maximum are, are different from what the case study um, explicitly talks about in terms of the number of senior citizens. So next thing I'm looking at now is which row does it fit in. So else if uh, the number of senior citizens is going to be... Now there's different ways you can do this. I'm just going to say less than or equal to 14, okay, because I know that if it's less than or equal to 14 and it has it in the first criteria then it's going to definitely be uh, between it's going to be the first row 12 to 16 or 10 to 14 if we're looking at the number of senior citizens that we're talking about so if the number of senior citizens is less than or equal to 14 then I know the first thing is I know the carers are going to equal 2 so let's get that boxed in and now word is automatically capitalizing certain things so it's just capitalized carers there you know, when you're writing this in an exam, if you go capital letters, go capital letters everywhere. If you if you go lowercase, go lowercase everywhere. A capital letter variable compared to a lowercase uh, variable it are two different variables. So although Word will correct these things for me, um, you just make sure that your you know whatever you go with, you stay. You have that level of consistency throughout your program. So I've got carers number two. Now the total number of people I need to keep a track of the total number um, is going to be so total people is going to equal but the number of carers and the number of senior citizens okay so senior citizens so now I've got a track of how many total people are and that's going to help me when I try and figure out the cost of the meal and the cost of a theatre ticket so how do I calculate the cost well the cost is going to be the higher of the coach so if it's going to be less than 40 it's going to be 150 and I'm going to add that to and again you can do you can do it separately you can say the number of uh, the total number of people times uh, 14 plus the total number of people times 21 so you're doing it as two separate calculations but I know that basically 14 and 21 is 35 you might as well just do it in one calculation a little bit more efficient you're just going to do the total number of people or total people and we're going to times that by 35 yeah make sure you get your brackets in there so you got your math, 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 mathematics working correctly. So I've, calcul I've calculated the total cost there, and that's it. That's done and dusted. Now I'm going to replicate that same else if section for the next two segments. Um, so I'm going to I'm just going to take that and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to paste it here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change the numbers. So if the senior citizens now it's not going to be 14. It's 26 minus the two carers, so it's 24. Okay, carers still stay stay as two. Total people is going to be the same. But the cost is not going to be 150, it's going to be 190 based on the table above. And it's not going to be times 35, 
is going to be times 3350 so a little bit of a discount there uh, and that looks that looks uh, that looks fine last one third column so if the senior citizens are now less than 30 now I can make this a bit more efficient actually I don't need it I don't need to check how many senior citizens because by default if it doesn't meet that criteria it doesn't meet that criteria and it doesn't meet that criteria specifically speaking that line that line and that line then by default it's going to meet the less than or equal to 36 criteria so I can just have an else statement over here okay so else now I know that now, now that this section over here is looking at this section over here so carers are now going to equal three we need an additional carer we get that from the case study uh, the total people can remain the same the cost is going to be 225 okay and we're going to times that by a little bit more of a discount here by 32 okay so now at this stage here the program has sussed out how much it's going to cost to run this particular trip so look at the case study the case study last sentence is asking you to work out the total cost and it's working to ask the cost per senior citizen. So total cost is pretty simple. We just want to print a message. Again, be uh, be meaningful in your in your output for the user. So the total cost of the trip is, and we want to add the variable cost. Yeah, make sure you put that outside the speech marks. You know, there's your string. Okay, that's what get printed out. That's your variable. Okay, and it's getting that from whatever you've stored into here. Second thing we need to do. Is we want to print off the cost per senior citizen. Now, you can't use total people in this because total people takes into consideration the number of carers as well as the senior citizens, and that's why we had to split it out. That's why we had to store it. We had to store senior citizens separately, carers separately, and total people separately. So I'm going to print off on the screen. And again, there are different ways that you can do this. You could take the total number of people. You know, and then you could take away the carers, and then you could, you know, divide it by the total cost. And there are different ways you can do this, and that's fine. That's what programming is about. There isn't one solution to a given problem. But I'm trying to do it the simplest way, uh, and trying to use the trying to use the efficient uh, method of of coding. So, again, I want to output message: the cost per senior citizen is, uh, and then I'm going to do. Well, it's going to be the cost, okay, and it's going to be divided by the number of senior citizens, yeah, senior citizens, and uh, again, you can see I've, I've um, not included the carers in that because they go for free. I'm basically looking at the case study task number one, we've inputted the number of senior citizens, yeah, we've done that, we figured out what row it uh, categorizes into, we've done the calculation on how much it's going to cost. And then at the end uh, over here, we've printed off your total cost and your cost per senior citizen. Standard program, you've got your, your, your variable declaration at the top, your inputs, your calculation, and your outputs. And that's your nice bog standard, easy, uh, simple programming uh, solution for task number one.